Hey, 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 welcome, welcome. What is up, you guys? What's up, welcome everybody? to today's weekly live stream. I'm Ja, and today, as many of you have already asked, I have Peter with me. You really? Seriously, you guys asked? Yeah, there wow. were some people. Uh, some people, there's always yeah, some yeah. people. But uh, uh, no, good to be back, guys. It's been a, a lot while. of guys in the chat already. Very, very, very happy to see you guys. Troy, of course. Yeah. Of much love, guys, much love. Yeah. Hello, guys. So, what are we going to do today? We have a brand new monitor that I'm going to unbox for you guys. And a very tiny little guy that's right underneath there. Of course, I'm not unboxing for that as well. And after that, I will show you all about what the, monitors, uh, what the monitor and the uh, tiny desktop can do. Uh, I'm going to open it up for you guys uh, so you can see what makes it tick from the inside. And of course, there are going to be uh, some live demonstrations and you always get a chance to ask any questions that you want or uh, you know, share your opinions and just generally you know, have a chat with us, have a good time because that's also why we're here, right? Always. And of course, per usual, my big head is now in the way, but there's a Steam wallet code giveaway. Oh, so yeah. just go to msite.com slash two slash insider. And there, the more actions you perform, the more chances you have at winning one of today's Steam wallet codes. So if you didn't win on the first few tries, don't worry. You are always in the drawing pool for today. So uh, no, the, uh, there's going to be more and you're still in the drawing pool. So you don't have to redo all your actions every time we announce a winner. Yeah. Um, so yeah, guys, good luck. And uh, let's have some fun and drop everything in the chat that you uh, want to let us know. We'll do our best to uh, really read the chat, but uh, sometimes it goes really fast. But uh, yep. uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that to uh, Peter. So. And I'm going to uh, keep myself busy with this for Make you guys. Make the questions interesting, guys. I'll try and call them out for Ja. All All right. Right. So there's already one, one good one, but we're going to save that one for later. It's about what is the specs of the mini desktop. They are coming up. Ja will uh, we'll talk all about that later on in the stream. Yes. For now, I mean, no it's, it's a big contrast, right? There's a huge box there for a and a really nice looking box. Uh, if I do say so, uh, of the monitor and in the, indeed a, a relatively mm. tiny box. Yeah. In front of that, so it it really is quite big, um, but uh, I'm gonna get this off the desk for now. It's, this is just to get you guys warmed up, you know, <laughs> so you know what's uh, what's to come. Clickbait, guys. And, Clickbait. Um, yeah, is it working? Let me know. <laughs> I think so. It will work on me. <sighs> it, I mean, it's quite honestly, heavy. That box does look pretty sweet. It's gonna be back in a moment. Right now, we're going to start and focus with our brand new QB. Good things come in small packages, right? Yeah. For those of you who have watched our past live streams, you are aware of that we have already done a QB live stream before, and I believe Eric was uh, doing the live stream then. He was the host. He opened it up, and <laughs> uh, it never worked a day since. So <laughs> that's also one of the reasons why we didn't invite him for this live stream. I so think we're all still traumatized from that stream, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why it's become an inside joke to uh, don't let Eric do any uh, yeah. any teardowns. I like to lose screws, you know. Eric destroys everything he touches, and um, actually, I, I don't know what, what is my the thing? bad thing about you. But yeah, what is my thing? Yeah, what's your bad thing? I, I, I'm not sure if I'm you know I'm the one who should judge that. I guess everybody else should uh, you know the viewers. Maybe you guys can tell can tell us what what is my thing really, is it, or am I like you know the, the guy who's like in the middle of everything, nothing really stands out. That could also be. <laughs> you guys be the judge. Yeah. What do you guys think about it? I'm just playing around with the box sure. just to show you because this is not, obviously not the desktop, not the PC, but the box. So the Wouldn't box that be itself something? is already very, very tiny. So let's see what's inside. Wouldn't that? I know somebody who has a name, like you know, a nickname, who I think would love a PC shaped like an actual box. Uh, I am I am box. That's, that's I'm ring, pretty sure. Does ring a bell? Does ring a bell? I'm not sure if he's in the chat today. Usually he's there. Yeah, I haven't seen him yet. But together with you, Yush, may have missed him. So just removing some uh, protective foams, <coughs> and here it is. This is actually uh, the star, small boy, which is very small as you can see. Just is a, is a 3090 Ti inside. Yeah, the. Uh, the Fentus uh, Zero Fan version, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, stick around and you'll see because uh, I've heard some rumors Power that adapter. John might actually do a teardown of this one. So, if you want to know, stick around. 
<laughs> when MSI is gonna make a so mobile screws. phone? Well, this thing actually comes close to the size of a. Mo no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Power cable. And the last thing in here that we need for later is going to be a mounting plate. You'll find out in a moment what this is for. I already uh, told you what it is, but you will see what you can do later. So here we have, of course, our use when you open our uh, boxes. You can um, go to the promotion page, so you can uh, be part of the uh, awards, well, the rewards program. Don't let it fall out. Uh, let me just put the protection foams back in there. Where are our masks? We don't wear them in the studio because we are actually... Uh, actually, it doesn't say... Wow, that's been a long time. It doesn't say that how far apart we are, right? It used to. Because we are... There's like We're not actually sitting next to each other. Like I can't touch Ja physically like this. He's, uh, he's yeah, sitting about it? five or... <laughs> five or so... Yeah. Uh, grab it, grab it. <laughs> this, that's like the world's meanest giveaways. Like, if you can take it, you can have it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I think our uh, our designer just forgot to put a five meters it in. It could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, it's it, like I said, it's been so um, it's like the normal for, yeah. for a while now for us. For a while, I think it's like for the past two years now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much since, uh, well, since March 2020, right? That's when it started. Kicking off here, at least. Uh, and no, we're not uh, in uh, Japan. We are streaming from the Netherlands. But yeah, we are staying safe and trying to keep distance. But I, uh, yeah, we're yeah, still taking precautions. You know, you never know nowadays with all the variations. So. Mm. <sighs> variations, well. vaccinations, you name it. And people getting superpowers. Exactly. Uh, Bitten by spiders and All everything like that. Stuff. People crawling up walls. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let me. Uh, yeah, I already told you guys, right? So we have the power cable here and the power adapter. Uh, I'm going to put this aside for now, but yes. I will use this later in just a moment to get with the screws. Really have to keep an eye out on this one because <laughs> they really tend to That's uh, your thing, disappear right? out of nowhere around usually. you. Usually, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here we have our QB and JSL. So JSL stands for Jasper Lake. Um, yeah, this is our newest, uh, the brand new uh, edition in our QB series. Uh, you might be aware of our previous generations, the QB8, the QBN, we have the QB10. Um, I believe the one that Eric destroyed was the QB10 because that was last year's, there was a 10th generation. I think it was even before that, it might have yeah. been the QBN, but that doesn't matter. C yeah, it could be, yeah. Um, yeah, so some, you know, some general information for you guys. Obviously, this is, yeah, this is a tiny PC, right? So you shouldn't be expecting to play, uh, you know, Crisis with, uh, you know, <laughs> high FPS or anything in that direction. This is really meant for convenience. It's meant for portability. It's meant for, you know, something that you can use for your TV, for example, or, you know, that you can for example, just put in your pocket and bring it with you to your friends or you know, use it for um, yeah, a lot more uh, use scenarios. I'll show you guys later as well. But uh, yeah, this is really meant as an all-round uh, entertainment, all-purpose PC uh, for uh, at home, for at work, uh, you know, so for businesses as well. You might often also see this kind of stuff uh, at receptions. That's uh, you know uh, somewhere really neatly put away because it's so tiny you don't even see it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, really what the focus, focus is for our uh, QB series. Really, all the QB series, they are tiny PCs just like this. And of course, in the QB, we also have different uh, segmentations. So we have different levels of entries uh, as to you know, how powerful the PCs are, uh, what they are actually meant for. So this one is really uh, a, let's say, a entry into some convenience that you want to have in your lives whatever it is that's, uh, that you're doing at home or you know, uh, bringing it uh, along to work or using it for work, at work. So yeah, a lot of stuff that you can do with the QB and that's uh, what, is, what it's meant for. Now, the size, um, as you can see here, it's, it's not even, uh, well, it's about 60% of my palm and I don't necessarily have like a long palm. 
apologies, I ate my banana again for lunch, so I <laughs> threw it away. So I don't have a banana here for scale, but you can use your imagination by just guessing, you know, how big my palm could be, right? And uh, if you if you must know the exact um, dimensions, uh, I believe if uh, if I remember this correctly, this is about 12, uh, 12 centimeters. I have all the details for you lined up in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, basically it's a 12 centimeters uh, white uh, brick, a square, and it's only half a kilograms heavy. So yeah, you can carry like ton, tons of these around and you pretty much still wouldn't notice <laughs> that it's in your bag. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's very light, very portable, and most of all, very small. If you have a jacket, you can basically just put it inside your breast uh, pocket. And it's not gonna be much of a bother because it's so light. Um, yeah, so that's really uh, uh, when it comes to the size and the portability of the QB, as you can see, and you can imagine what you can do with this. A lot of stuff. Um, so some specifications, of course, you guys are wondering about that part, right? Um, yeah, you can guess what's inside. You know, I can, I can already tell you it's an Intel platform, um, but you can guess the uh, processor. So like I mentioned already, right, this is our entry level uh, QB, really for, for the mass that just wants to, uh, that just wants to have some play entertainment, they get the stuff that they can bring around and something that they can neatly tuck away at work and still going to perform very uh, fast and reliably. Um, I guess you guys have some time to think. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna tell you. Uh, this right here, uh, well, you have two options. So the first option is the Celeron N4500. Uh, and the second for, uh, variant is going to be the Pension, uh, Pension and the 6000 uh, series. So we have two variants in here. So as you can imagine with the CPUs, like I said, they're entry level and they really just do what they're told and they're supposed to do, uh, you know, what they're supposed to do for all day browsing and workloads and just all around entertainment stuff. Basic functionality. Yeah. Yes. So if you want to game and you're looking for a tiny PC, you know, uh, we're not gonna you know, try to fool you because this is really not meant for gaming, right? You can play some light games on there, but that's really all there is to it. You know, it don't, you can't expect to you know have Cyberpunk running on this on this thing. <laughs> so yeah, that's no ray uh, tracing. for Sorry. the purpose. Um, yeah, uh, as for the rest of the specs, I'm just going to give you some uh, highlights, uh, more of the details I'll give you later, so you can also have a complete overview. Uh, also, in case you just joined or even missed something. So, as for the memory, uh, in this specific uh, configuration, I have the 4 gigabyte version, but it, uh, it goes up to 16 gigabytes and to DDR4. And looking at the size, you can already tell that it's not going to be the regular sized uh, DDR4 DIMMs, right? And uh, yeah, so if you want to know anything else regarding the spec for now, I'm not going to tell you everything already because that's going to be a, a mouthful and you're not going to remember everything till later. Like I said, I have a complete overview for you so you can go by them at your own pace. And oh, I just see the iron boxes, of course, in the yep. chat, like usual. All right. Um, so yeah, this thing can also be mounted. That's also one of the, uh, let's say, one of the benefits as to its size. So when I say mounted, what I mean is that if I take the monitor, which I have here, this is also one of our um, home use, office use, a uh, very simple monitor, which is just you know meant for display purposes. It displays and that's basically all it does. Uh, it's a know, wireless usually, model as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, let's see, where did I, oh, yeah, I put the brackets back in the box. The power button is red or blue? I, I when you turn it blue. on, it's going to be blue. Yeah. If it's red, then something's wrong. No, I, I don't know, maybe. If it's red and it blinks, you should probably run away because uh, you have yeah. about 10 seconds to uh, clear the area. Then you, there's a little sound that plays, bomb has been activated. Bomb has been planted. Exactly. On the back of the QB, let me show you in close up. Uh, here, just wait for Peter for just a moment. Oh, yeah. Because he's uh, uh, I was reading also, the chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. there's indeed somebody, uh, Edwin was asking, is this already installed memory? 
uh, and yes. the SSD or must add this. It's not a bare bone, so indeed, in this configuration, it's already inside. So we have two of these holes right here that you have to uh, align with the hinges. And basically what you do is that you take this uh, in the box uh, bracket or plate, mounting plate, and you just simply install this. Uh, it's already tell you, uh, telling you like which side up and stuff. So you just have to align this with uh, the feta mount uh, of the back of the monitor. So if you're interested to see, uh, to know uh, which monitors we have, uh, have this kind of uh, mounts, you can just go to our website. We have uh, the entire category uh, in our product lineups that's dedicated to like working at home or, uh, you know, some um, office monitors. And basically many of these kind of models have this kind of uh, setup at the back in which you can just simply install the back plate with uh, the screws. And then all you have to do is click the QB onto the hinges and that is it. So let me take out the screws. Versa... Um, it's a 10 by 10, by the way. Right? It's 10, yeah, right? Exactly. It's a, uh, it's just, a just default to check 10 that 10. indeed. So that's, it's probably the most common uh, among uh, office monitors. So I have to use my left, so I'm going to look a little bit uncomfortable. Don't worry about that. Everything for the show. All right. Once the first one is in, it's going to be a bit more easy. Not bad. Guys, can you take the suspense to see if one of the screws is going to fall off? <laughs> <laughs> Should I, though? Um. You know, especially with our kind of floor, which is like dark gray, if you drop a screw in here, you yeah. are really, really screwed. <laughs> Well, it's like a, a mix, right, of a bit lighter and a bit darker elements, and so it's it's yeah. really if you if you lose it's, any it's, kind it's, of it's like a grayish kind of thing, anything on the color scale between full black and, <laughs> and like light gray, yeah, basically. it's gone. It's just it's like it's sucked out of existence. You, you're you've lost it. Many times we wonder if a screw falls down, if it just not enters a black hole. Know what we should do? Just buy a really powerful magnet and then once every while just, you know, cover the floor with it, just oh, go over everything. And <laughs> We're going to be rich with what we find. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay. Um, how to basic. Yeah, that, that is pretty much it in the soy soy. And this is how to basic, but it doesn't matter. It's, you know, we, we cover the basics as well as some of the most more, more advanced stuff. All right, so here you have the plate installed. And here in the middle, you have two of these kind of hinges, and that's where you have to align these two holes. And uh, all you gotta do is drop it, and that's it. Exactly. It's like hanging up a painting in a way. Works the same way a lot of the time, or a clock. So basically, then this is how you use it. And from the front, it just looks like you have a monitor that is more or less a all-in-one. So basically what you have done is that you have turned your monitor into an all-in-one, basically, right? Because they kind of fused. Pretty cool. And yeah, this, you know, especially for people that like to uh, save space, for people uh, working that like to have a clean desk, uh, you know, receptions or um, in the shops, uh, usually that's this kind of setup is uh, quite often what you what you see because this is really um, you know one of the best ways to keep a neat desk and really hidden uh, hid away anything that you don't want to show to um, you know that you don't want to have on the desk to save space also. Troy Troy is trying to ruin the moment and then just everything you've done said. What about double sided tape? Would that work? <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you if you go that way, you yeah. know, I suggest you to not even use double-sided tape. Just take duct tape, wrap it around like 360, and then <laughs> across the monitor as well. Yes. <laughs> you know, Either that, or just go you, with uh, like super glue or something. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going into that direction, anyways, you know, might as well use duct tape, right? Because duct yeah. tape, you know, you can use it for anything. Yeah. Well, but I like the way. I mean, I like the creative thinking. You know, that's that's nice. That's good. And once you're done, take it off. Yeah. Yeah, Just Hegarty is also saying so this is something my wife would really like because you you really yeah you can hide a lot of the wires so yeah exactly yeah. you can make keep it a very clean uh, it setup keep it clean yep. 
Is that um, a Raspberry Pi? No. Uh, <laughs> no, Fizzle. <laughs> Yeah, actually, uh, Raspberry Pi is kind of more or less also based on this kind of uh, SOCs. So you have uh, the system on a chip. But uh, this is like m more of a high performance SOC uh, Intel platform. So which means that, you know, for example, uh, the DIMMs, they have their own, um, they, they are soldered on the motherboard differently because uh, on the Raspberry Pi, for example, everything is already integrated like a little chip on the board, right? Uh, this is like a high performance version of the Raspberry Pi, more or less. You, you can see it that way. Raspberry Pi on steroids. Yes, a lot of steroids. But you would be forgiven to think that the, the, the form factor, I mean, you can build a Raspberry Pi in roughly the same form factor. So, yeah. yeah. Or even buy one probably <clears throat> in a pre, uh, pre built. So, what happens inside this little guy? Um, yeah. It's, it's really easy to open it up. Uh, we left some spaces up for you to even uh, do some upgrading. Uh, and I'm going to show you how. Um, all you gotta do is on the back, there are four screws on the rubber feet. And then uh, all you gotta do is just unscrew those and you've basically opened up your uh, QB. By the way, don't do this if you're not comfortable doing this or if you don't really have that much experience. Um, but there's probably plenty of videos these days and there's, as Jaws is going to show you, there's not that much you can do uh, badly if you make sure that you are careful and of course have completely disconnected the, the PC. The yes. Never use a screwdriver while the power is connected. <laughs> Ooh, that one nearly got away. <laughs> I was trying to uh, you know, push, yep. the, push the edges. Living see, on the uh, edge. <laughs> how far I can push it. Does the unit have Wi-Fi? That's actually a pretty good question. It does. There you go. <coughs> but I think Jazz is going to have more uh, detailed information about things like you know Wi-Fi and other specs it has yes. uh, in a minute. So, so like I said, you know, I have a complete overview for you guys. Yep. Uh, so you can uh, read it carefully with a, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea if that's your thing. <laughs> in just a moment. <coughs> yes. Ooh, the green PCB. Yeah, it's a it's a green piece, right? So you gotta sometimes you see some gray stuff like from the background mm -hmm. through this, but that's because of the uh, chroma key. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically this is the inside. And um, let me put this down and show you all of this in a more comfortable way through my phone. And then I can tell you exactly what is what and what they do. All right, here we go. Yes. <clears throat> so um, let me turn this around because it was upside down. Here you see a huge ass pad. That's the cooling <laughs> pad for the uh, uh, SO DIM. So this is your memory. Not chewing right. gum, guys. Yes, it's dual channel, and right now there's only uh, a single SO DIM installed. And right underneath there, let me just well try to open it up like this. Because there are two little hinges on the side, you just have to click it to the side and then it pops up kind of like a PCIe M.2 SSD. It's the same like uh, if you've ever upgraded a laptop or seen how you do that, it's, yeah. it's exactly the same. It's the same, yes. So in the laptop you also find these small uh, SODs and in here is the same case. So like I said, this is the upper row which in which I just took the uh, DIMM uh, from and then underneath there is a second one so if you want to uh, expand the memory uh, to for example 8 gigabyte or 16 gigabyte uh, you can just find one online and then uh, well Easy well, to upgrade. You, you gotta make sure, yes, it's compatible and then install it here and basically that's all there is to it because the installation process is very easy you just click it in like diagonally like a M.2 SSD and then you push it down oh, the, and it will the, go the, click the gel feels point. really weird but Ew. <laughs> and that's it by the way John I'm getting a lot of people asking about that blue SATA connection connector mm -hmm. yes now let me tell you a funny story about this because like I said earlier right there are two configurations well two different models in our QB and JSL um, series. So you either have the one with the PCIe NVMe M.2 SSD installed, like in this uh, particular model, or you're going to have not and or, but or. Or you're going to have the model in which the SATA is going to be used. Now, 
since it will be a lot more uh, costly, uh, it's going to um, be a lot easier for us to have one PCB or one kind of custom motherboard in which the SATA connector is still there, even though this SKU, well, this model uh, only has the M.2 SSD. So you, you can also find the other model, which is uh, with the S uh, SATA SSD, but then it will not have the M.2 SSD. So that's why this little guy is here. Because in the other model, this one is used. Yeah. People are asking uh, if they can even, uh, even though this one, this specific model doesn't come with the uh, SATA uh, port used, uh, but if you leave the back off like this, or I guess maybe you shouldn't, but uh, technically speaking, could you then still use that SATA slot let as me, well? Let me show you because uh, the short answer is yes. So and it is the functional. And the better answer is we actually thought about <laughs> that. <laughs> so we have uh, we already have the SATA cable here for you to use. So for, for example, this one is already pre-arranged. As you can see, uh, it's already combined on the other end. So you plug this one here and the other one for here, you have the power. And then if you if you so choose to uh, you know leave the back open because you necessarily want to have this model but you still want to have ssd yes you have the option but like we said it's not recommended but yeah you can but you shouldn't <laughs> maybe you need them to, to do some a little bit of modding on the chassis yes because <laughs> the other model is actually going to be a bit higher so, because obviously you need space to uh, install the 2.5 inch SSD. So that's why that one is going to be a little bit taller, if you will, about two centimeters taller. But it's pretty damn cool that we offer the possibility to, to use that SATA slot, even though in this specific model, it's yeah, not because uh, you know, it's default. here anyway. So we figured, you know, might as well give you some cables just in case you want to do it. Yep. <laughs> and here, like I said, you have the uh, M.2 SSD, and underneath there, I think you can already see, mm -hmm. you can guess what it is. Those of you who, are, uh, who have a little bit of knowledge about this kind of stuff. So, oh, let me take this out. So, uh, I see some so questions, but we can address this later on about uh, maximum memory speed and size, uh, or, or you know, the compatible uh, memory yes. parts. Uh, this, this will come up later, I think. Um, so hiding underneath the M.2 is our uh, Intel or Wi-Fi chip. So yes, you have the Wi-Fi capability here, which go. is the uh, Wi-Fi 6. Nice. So as you can see, everything is really here uh, <laughs> very compact and neatly put together uh, on Intel's uh, SOC uh, platform. And I would love to show you guys the, like, the other side of it, but um, well, that was the wrong way. It doesn't allow me, this, this setup doesn't allow me to open this up any further than this. But <laughs> basically what happens on the other side is that there is a huge heat sink dedicated to the CPU with a tiny little fan in the middle, which is about uh, five centimeters. And it's extremely quiet. Uh, I've tested this model, I put it on the load and basically you just don't hear it. But yeah, basically that's the entire other side. Uh, one big ass heatsink <laughs> with a tiny fan in the middle. The fan kind of reminds me of the fan that's on like uh, at the beginning when the X570 board came out. They have like a little fan that's cooling the uh, chipset, right? It's more or less the same fan as that, but then a lot quieter. <laughs> so this is uh, well the internal setup for uh, the QB and, and JSL. One guy was asking uh, if it was USB 3.1 Gen 1 or Gen 2. And no, I, I it's 3.2 3 Gen 2. Oh, there you go. Actually, 3.2 Gen 2, That's, but it's 10, 10 gigabits per second, right? That's... Yes, yes. All right, so let me put everything back in place and unbox full case I actually uh, Punk guy, well, he showed anything. he showed you pretty much what he can show without destroying the unit um, and he's gonna actually you know reassemble it right now because later on he's going to actually po power it on and, and you know show you uh, what it can do and here we have the Kensington lock if you're interested CPU socket type, is it BGA as in laptops? 
Um, I think it's an SOC. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, the CPU is me. definitely not upgradable in one of these units. No. You just gotta leave it to be as it is. Yep. But you can you can upgrade the uh, the storage and the memory as Ja just uh, showed. So, I guess it does not have a dust filter then. Um, not really, no. Well, I mean, there's there's obviously a little bit of grid going on there at the side. Uh, there, there are some holes and uh, also at the top. But ideally, you shouldn't place this thing in a dusty environment anyway. And, you know, yeah. there, there's so going to, it, it, it may gather some dust if it's extremely dusty, but probably if you just, uh, you know, <coughs> clean it off with a, a vacuum cleaner or something you can probably get most of the dust out but th that's going to take a while for, for dust to, to that degree to gather definitely especially with uh the fan the size of the fan and the rpm that the fan actually yeah. runs on it's going to take you probably quite a few years to gather visible dust here because this right here actually stops a lot of the dust already as you can see it barely lets in the holes they look bigger than what they actually let through because right on their, um, the other side they actually have a lot of the stuff that that makes the hole kind of yeah it kind of acts like a mesh so a lot yeah. of the uh, the dust is already being stopped at this level and the fan is only about this big and it doesn't rotate as fast as you're used to with your normal CPU fans. So for this thing to really ga gather dust, uh, dust in such a level that you're going to, uh, you know, have any uh, problems with it, it's probably going to take you like 10 years. And even then, you can just easily blow it off by, uh, you know, because there's, there are a lot of these, uh, let me see, on the other side as well, uh, air holes in there that you can use. You can even, like I showed you before, you can open it up, you can, uh, you know, just blast it off. So, yeah. no worries there. Uh, what is the version of the HDMI output? I think that's coming up in one of the, uh, one of the well, spec Well, yeah, I can tell you already, but it's the uh, 1.4. 1.4. All right, if you guys uh, want to see uh, anything else regarding the cube that I maybe didn't show you or you missed it, just uh, let me know. But for now, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it be and Ethernet, hope when I uh, start it up, it's Ethernet still uh, jack, working. I think. Uh, yeah, it does have a UTP port, right? Native. So yeah. what's the question? Uh, the uh, LAN port. The LAN port. Oh, yes, yes, there is a, a LAN port. And it is... One gigabit or it's, it's actually just your usual uh, usual uh, LAN uh, port. It's it's what you will find on every uh, kind of entry level uh, desktops. All right. Oh, oh. see, I didn't screw this one in yet. <laughs> see, they're trying to escape on you again. Keeps happening. Yep. It's, there's something right. with you and screws, man. Okay. I'm pretty sure that I have everything. Like Does this. it actually powerful? That's a good question, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll show that later on in the stream. Did he say powerful? Yes. Is it actually powerful? Well, it is powerful to a certain degree. That's just. I, I mean, <coughs> if you're talking like gaming systems, you know, other systems that we feature on the stream, like uh, I don't know, the the latest Ryzen processors, like uh, 5950X or something. No, de definitely not. You know, it's not like i9, i7, i5 levels. Uh, this is very a very basic uh, system for basic functionality, uh, but it is, as you'll see, it's surprisingly powerful for what it, you know, what it what it's meant for. <coughs> so it really depends on uh, <laughs> well, play games. I don't think <laughs> we're going to do that on it. This is for leisure, you know, for, for relaxation. It's not for... Um, Hardcore gaming. Yeah, sweaty yeah. games. Exactly. Um, yeah, okay, so now I'm going to give you some overview regarding its entire spec sheet uh, list and what you can expect. And so, uh, yeah, okay, here we go. Now, like I mentioned, we have the pension version, we have the Celeron version, and uh, the pension is the quad core, and the Celeron is the dual core. Now. If you want to compare these kind of CPUs, you can uh, you can more or less like for example the Pension one, the uh, N6000, you can more or less compare this to like the fifth generation i5 i7s uh, of the uh, Intel laptop CPUs. So they were of, of course still uh, really really fast. Uh, it's just that of course technology evolves and the generations passes and 
if you were to use the same CPU right now with Windows 10 or whatever, you know, you're still going to have a very, very good time. So, yeah, is it meant for gaming? Yeah, no. But it's use well. It's meant for everyday use. It's meant for you know watching uh, for, uh, movies in 4K. Uh, you can just install this uh, you know right after uh, behind your PC, or you can, you can bring this to your friend's house. You you can use it as a you know streaming uh, device, or you know um, you take it to work as a secondary PC, or you set it up at work as yeah. a working PC. It's for general leisure. So uh, yeah, in case you missed that. Uh, yeah, it's so. <laughs> don't compare also this very to suitable. a gaming PC, right? I think also very suitable for working from home, right? To a, to a degree, like for example, yeah, general definitely. office usage, um, yeah. mail, stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's very it's, easy. it's it's made uh, it's made to handle this kind of uh, apps. So Microsoft apps. Uh, you can uh, use some uh, you know, audio editing on this. Uh, you can put put together your uh, your family video uh, and stuff like that. And definitely, if you're working from home, you know, using Outlook and all the Microsoft apps, uh, even some uh, some heavy browsing. Uh, extensions etc uh, etc it's all fine because that's what it's meant for now uh, so the chipset the Intel uh, SOC um, so if you missed on this well basically what this means is that you have a little platform in, in which everything is already integrated so all the ports uh, are integrated onto the chip and when you have like a high performance one you also have a separate like uh, SO DIMS installation on there and so not everything is um, you know uh, being integrated into little chips on the uh, board itself so here you really have dedicated uh, SO DIMS that's what makes it high performance um, compared to the, the uh, well, let's say the original or the normal SOC uh, platforms. And yeah, GPU, um, <laughs> nothing to talk about there because it's just simple integrated CP uh, it's a GPU. Uh, yes, it can handle 4K movies fine without any problems, but uh, you know, beyond that, you, sh yeah, it, you shouldn't expect too much from it beyond like watching 4K movies from the integrated GPU. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, you guys also ask about memory, right? So memory, yes, um, the speed is relatively high. It's uh, 2933. And you can expand this uh, particular model to 16 gigabytes. Um, so uh, we, right now, we I believe we have the 4 gigabyte version, we have the 8, and we have the 16 gigabyte version. So if you have like uh, the 4 or the 8, you can still expand this, uh, no worries. Um, yeah, uh, storage, I pretty much already explained this when I opened the case up uh, and the rest, yeah, I'm not going to read everything. You can also read for yourselves uh, if you have any questions regarding the specs. Uh, yeah, just let me know. And otherwise you can read this. Uh, in the meantime, maybe we can already uh, draw a first winner of today. Sure, uh, just before we do that, one thing that was asked by a couple of people is also the uh, power usage. I do want to mention that it's just uh, 45 watts in total. Yes, so and that's, yeah. it doesn't have an internal um, PSU, of course. No. So you have a power cable uh, that connects to your power adapter, and that's it. Maybe you can, yeah, it's, it, but it's relatively small, right? It's really uh, yeah. I quite mean, a small power adapter there. Yeah. Usually when you have like a power brick for your laptop or for a monitor, it's going to be three times, four times the size of this. Yeah. But since it's such a low wattage uh, adapter, it's just really tiny. So if you just you know bundle this together, you can have a great uh, cable management experience. Yeah. All right, um, indeed, we're going to see if we can make some people incredibly happy. Uh, so we're having a giveaway of uh, $20 Steam voucher codes, uh, Steam wallet codes. You can go to msi.com slash two slash insider or uh, go to the Gleam link that's uh, being uh, Posted in the chat via a bot every, I think every five minutes. Yes. Um, if you don't see the link, uh, please make sure you're watching the stream on either YouTube or Twitch because uh, those channels are most reliable when it comes to sharing those links. So if you don't want to miss out on the giveaway, make sure you watch on one of those two platforms. Um, and yeah, we've got a couple of codes to give away today. And if you have, if you're a regular viewer, you can also use uh, your bonus uh, points. Yeah, so you use your loyalty, uh, loyalty bonus. Yes, correct. So uh, basically every uh, action you perform uh, in the Gleam system or uh, any points you add to the tally gives you a better chance of winning. Uh, that's basically how it works. And we just have a random system in the background that just draws randomly uh, a couple of winners. And let's see if we have our first one. Yep, 
We have our first one. Already. And their name is Red Mage NW. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yep. I hope you uh, have fun with it. Yes. So, uh, in the coming days, I will email the code to you guys. So, uh, yeah, make sure to check your inbox in the coming days. And if you don't find it there, uh, if you have one, of course, then check your spam box. But, um, yeah, congratulations uh, to the rest of you guys. Uh, good luck because we have more to give away to you guys. So, uh, and if you already registered, you don't have to do it again, like I said at the beginning of the stream. But in case you missed yep. it, you're still in the drawing pool for the rest of the stream until it ends. So, quite a few more chances for you still to go. Mm -hmm. All right, um, okay, so let's continue. <laughs> if we'd have used a Ryzen 5 or i5, then it could have been more interesting. Yeah, but then it probably yeah, wouldn't have been this small. It's going to be more. <laughs> yes, because it requires all, a bit yeah, more cooling and a, a bit more draw. power. So. Um, but um, yeah, actually we do have, like I said, higher SKUs uh, in our QB uh, lineup. So for example, we have the QB 10 with uh, Intel's 10th generation uh, yeah, CPUs and platform. And in there you will find higher performing uh, QBs. It's because there are still not regular desktop CPUs, uh, CPUs but you know, uh, compared to the entry level ones, if you really want to do some gaming on it, you know, you definitely have the experience, uh, well, the, the uh, possibility to, uh, to do so. So yeah, we do have higher um, end models, but um, yeah, that's just not the, the QB and uh, JSL for now, because this is meant for a different kind of audience. Yeah, so even in the QB lineup, there's different options. So if you are interested in a very small uh, form factor like this, uh, but you are looking in maybe for a, just a bit more powerful system, sure. those are there and you can check them out on our website. Uh, just look for the QB lineup and there you'll find it. Like Jazz said, QB 10th, um, those have a bit more powerful. They'll probably be a little bit bigger as well than this one, <coughs> yeah. uh, but um, still within the same form factor. Uh, RPG Lock is saying only two USB. You can also buy USB uh, hub. Well, yeah, it's because of, I think because of um, Pankai's uh, question. He's saying it's only two USB uh, ports. Um, so one, if you if you use one for the mouse, one for the keyboard, uh, if you still want to use a pen ah. drive, then what do you do? Because, well, I think I, it's a good question. There's still two because there are four ports actually. Oh. Yeah. So I, maybe maybe uh, yeah. I went over this too fast when I was showing you guys around, but. <laughs> On the back side, uh, with all the I.O. ports here, uh, you can see there are two USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2s. Well, actually, these are 3.2 Gen 1s. Uh, on the front, we have two more, and these are USB 3.2 Gen 2s. So there you have go. four in total, yeah. which is quite a lot, actually, considering its size. Yeah. But, uh, you know, of course, we, we understand that uh, you know, once you have used your mouse and keyboard, you basically have no more ports left, so, uh, you know, uh, we're not gonna kind of do you know what certain brand is doing in which you're kind of required to use a hub <laughs> but uh, no but it, it's, it's yeah, a good suggestion yes. nonetheless if you want to keep as many ports because you, you may want to uh, you know connect for example a, an external hard drive or storage device which is also completely uh, you know that, that's quite doable with these uh, devices yeah, and it's completely valid exactly um, and you know to be fair for most keyboards and mice they don't require that much power so indeed a, a just connecting <coughs> one usb hub uh can can be a very nice solution to this actually yeah. a lot of monitors these days have like built-in usb hubs uh so you can you could potentially connect that one and then use that to connect your mouse and keyboard it doesn't require that much power or anything no. like that and then the rest it's of the usb ports you can use for uh things that are you know you want to optimize for speed or for power delivery uh, whatever device you connect to it. Yeah, and just to add to what Peter already said uh, regarding power, uh, you know, the CPU here, which is like the main component that draws in power, uh, you know, it doesn't go beyond 15 watts. So you have a lot of the headroom left in here to, uh, you know, use uh, peripherals, which also require power. So you don't have to uh, worry too much about that part. Yeah. Um, Gizmo is asking, oh, finally someone's asking about the price. <laughs> I was <laughs> expecting this to drop earlier, but maybe I missed it. No, some people um, have asked. Okay, yeah. So, um, uh, the Celeron uh, model is going to start at about 260-ish, uh, but this again, once uh, we really stress this every time, you know, your local retailer price can be very different than you know uh, what we have intended. Uh, we don't have much control over that to uh, to begin with. You know, a lot of variations, uh, variables in the world right now can influence the price, but it should be somewhere around 260. 
US dollars or euros, but depending on where you are, it can be different. And the pension one uh, version, which is like a higher uh, model, that one is coming uh, is coming around 310 US dollars or euros. So you have these two um, options to uh, choose from. Um, okay, so going back to uh, what I was doing earlier with uh, the nice power sli PowerPoint slides with the information that you guys really need because they're essential. Let's go back to that because I'm almost finished with it. Um, just to give you a little bit more information regarding the CPUs because you probably are not that familiar with this kind of CPUs because you know uh, every every time you hear CPU it's always you know Intel i7 you know 1100 <laughs> k 11 uh, 700k or i9 or stuff like that really you know gaming PC style um, but here really uh, you know these kind of CPUs are really meant for you know consumer grade uh, all around uh, PCs for homes so are really perfectly f fit for these kind of uh, setups so we have the pension and the Celeron. And compared to last gen, they actually uh, Intel actually improved a lot on the performance as well. Uh, you know, compared to last gen, there's like up to about 30% in increase in the IPC performance. So, yeah, quite a good uh, step uh, forward. And yeah, it's uh, it's on the Jasper Lake and with the 10 nanometer processor, so uh, process, which also you know makes it uh, kind of like efficient like it is right now. Um, furthermore, uh, Wi-Fi 6, of course, this being such a portable uh, device, uh, you know, we really, made, we really try to make sure that you have a reliable Wi-Fi wireless connection because, you know, <laughs> of course, everybody would like to uh, eliminate as many uh, cables as possible with these kind of devices because you're kind of tucking it away somewhere anyway. So, yeah, we make sure that you know, uh, there's Wi-Fi 6 connection for you to enjoy. If you're upgrading from older versions of Wi-Fi, uh, really you're going to have about uh, up to three times faster connection. And especially when it comes to latency, it's going to be up to 75% uh, improvement. So the speed, uh, you know, up to 2.5 gigahertz. So a lot of improvement there when it comes to wireless uh, connection. Um, okay. And it saves you another wire. Definitely. <laughs> so you don't have to use the LAN port, but it's there. Exactly. And yeah, um, just to recap, the the QB it's really multifunctional, and uh, you know you can use it at home, especially now, especially nowadays to work from home as a in a working PC. You can bring it along with you to somewhere. Uh, you can use it to to uh, to uh, as a streaming device on your TV. Uh, you know, you can put it uh, like right behind some monitor at work and display some stuff all the time. You can use it at receptions. Uh, really, all these kind of scenarios is really what this is meant for. Um, yeah. We, so, if you have any questions uh, regarding all of this, uh, let me know. I Otherwise, see one which we, we might want to address. Uh, Diva Barata, I hope I'm connect uh, Sorry, uh, saying that correctly, but. Um, is asking can any laptop power adapter be used D definitely not uh, we always recommend to use the original adapter that we uh, th that is provided with the product um, of course there there's a certain uh, you know it's a certain wattage certain amperage so if you find an adapter that that has the exact same values you could try that but again it, that's not recommended uh, and yeah we're not, uh, I don't know if that's covered by warranty, for example, when if, if it does incur any damage because of that. So, yeah, we always uh, recommend to stay and use the, uh, stay with the, the original parts. Yes. Uh, Can we install a full version of Windows without any compromise? Definitely. Yes. Here you already have a full-fledged uh, Windows Home uh, installed. Um, there's even the upgradeability to uh, Windows 11. So yes, no problem, a problem at all in that department, uh, ready to go. Yeah, and Rahul, yes. Uh, so it comes with, uh, if you've missed it, but it's before in this uh, live stream, Ja uh, already mentioned, there's two uh, versions available. One is uh, with the Celeron, which is a uh, dual core CPU, and yes. one with the Pentium, which is a uh, quad core CPU. Yes, correct. OK, then. Um, he will be back later in the stream, but right now I'm going to bring something else on the table because we're now really shifting size uh, to uh, from extremely small to uh, really, really, really big. All right. Let me grab the Summit MS321 UP. It's quite heavy. <laughs> Compared to a QB. <laughs> oh, man. It's, uh, it's bending the fabric, uh, not just of space and time, but also of the... The, mm, the, 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 the mouse pad that's covering the table. You're a science guy. 
<laughs> yes. You watch Bill Nye? Yeah. Who doesn't? Okay, so let me take it out of the box. This is usually the most annoying part, but uh, after that, <laughs> it's uh, smooth sailing. It's okay, it's not like there's like hundreds of people watching. <laughs> okay. There we go. Ooh. People okay. are getting hyped. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, really put away the box. <laughs> In such a way that it doesn't come up anymore. Okay. <laughs> Time to open it up. First thing that really catches your eyes uh, is really this. This is the uh, magnetic hood for the monitor. So what we have here uh, is the MS321 UP which is our uh, 4K business and uh, productivity monitor. So it's uh, all around just like the um, QB, but this one has a added, let's say bonus, because it's an excellent creator slash productivity monitor. So if you're into, uh, you know, creations, uh, creation, this one is going to be an excellent monitor. And this is also why we have the hood right here so that when you are uh, working on your uh, projects uh, this hoods uh, this kind of hoods they really make sure that there is no light spillage that's going to interfere with your panel's performance when it comes to uh, color distortion and uh, you know any glare and stuff like that so that's the hood but also of course install this later for you to see how that looks like this is uh, quite different when you compare this to the gaming monitors. Some people are already asking about the, the type of panel, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So impatience. Yeah, I know. Mm. Well, that's always <laughs> the case, right? Right, some cables here, of course. Uh, all the cables. Uh, of course, the instruction manual is all in here, and also the reward program that tells you, uh, well, this tells you how you can enter, and how you can earn rewards with our uh, promotions. And some more cables, of course, we have HDMI, display port cables, and the screws, really important. I'm going to need this in a moment. <laughs> and the power cable, I'm going to need that as well. And also the USB Type B, I'm going to need this one as well. Put this on the ground. And here we have the monitor itself. <laughs> Four four hundred hertz, 0. 0.5 milliseconds OLED monitor. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I doubt it. My position makes it really difficult to grab the monitor, but Ooh. I'm trying my best. Okay, here we go. And this is quite a big monitor, guys. Don't break it. No, he's not gonna. Take out the standard and then... Let's put this away. I need all the room that I can get. Mm -hmm. It's quite a workout, but uh, <laughs> it's worth it. Definitely. So let me first put this down. And so people were complaining about the bezels on the other monitor you used to, to show how the QB could could be put on the on the rear of it, but this one has virtually no bezels. Right? Okay, let me get everything out so I can uh, install the monitor. Or rather set it up. Uh, it's such a mess right now, but uh, yeah, okay. That's for later. That's, That's for later. Fine. That that mess is for your eyes only. No, our stream usually looks very neat and clean, but if only you knew what lays during the here. stream, you know, the things we do for you, the mess we put ourselves through. 
can only put <laughs> if, you, if, you're saying, if you're looking for a place to put it and you're short on room, you can always put it on my desk. <laughs> so uh, where can I find your desk? Sounds very convenient. Yeah, send us a DM and then we'll send Ja to your place. Promise. <laughs> yeah, but you're going to cover the uh, travel costs, so... Ah, uh... oh, come on. Some oh, fan service, Ja, some fan service. Come on. Okay, so besides the cables... Even the stand looks heavy. Is it, Ja, compared to uh, other stands yeah. that you've... Uh... Well, th this one particularly not really heavier than uh, what we usually have, but um, yeah. That doesn't mean that it's not it's not heavy because <laughs> all of our stands are kind of heavy because we use real metal inside. Yeah. So it's not just plastic. Uh, of course, right now on the uh, outside it's the um, it's the hardened uh, PVC or well, plastic, but on the inside we have the sturdy metal so as well as for the um, let's say the foot plate standard plate. Here especially, it's actually more metal <laughs> than plastic cover. You could probably put so. in uh, like a huge umbrella there at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> uh, as, as you can imagine, you know, uh, really trying to support these kind of bad boys when you adjust when you adjust it uh, and you, you play around with it, this really got to make sure that you know there's enough balance, there's enough weight on the ground on the table that's going to uh, make sure it always stays straight up. Uh, really simple process. You click it into each other and uh, on the back side there is a thumb screw and all you got to do is tighten, tighten it, it up and that's it after that is going to be part two which is the, inst <laughs> the installation of the monitor onto the standard plate show you Let's go into the detailed view there we go so right now we have two holes or four holes to fill up with screws and after that we're uh, more or less good to go so let me do that don't drop it People are saying, whoa, it comes with a stand. <laughs> not like not like certain companies who sold the stand separately. <laughs> yeah, I must say they had a uh, great publicity because of that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Stand looks very solid. Yeah, it is. Is the Visa again? I think it's a uh, yes. ten again, right? It's a standard ten by ten yep. centimeters. So also wall mountable. Yeah, if you like to have a very very clean desk, oh, uh, yes. put it on the wall. Yeah, or on a like one of the monitor arms. But Kay, you know, the last one. You, you wouldn't want to miss out on this stand either because it's a pretty good one. Okay, now cover it up. I was wondering what that thing was for. There you go. Oh, the peel. Oh, here it comes. Oh, yes. Nice. So in case you guys were wondering what this part is, because oh. uh, it was uh, really visible during uh, <laughs> all this view, this is so that you can have a better cable management because you can put all your cables in here and then it will make sure that everything will stay straight up or stay down. Okay, it is set up. Right. So here we have our newest Summit MS three two one 
UP, which is our <laughs> so much stuff that came in the box, but <laughs> which is our newest, um, let's say, business use or uh, use for at home and for content creation. Now, some. Other information, uh, you of course wonder about the size. Now, if you know about our kind of our naming rule, you have you have already guessed it's 32 inches because it's 3-2. And then the one stands for 3 to 1, the one stands for the first generation. And it's also uh, Ultra HD. So it's obviously flat. So it's not our uh, curved gaming, uh, gaming series. But it's really here meant for uh, content creation for uh, uh, use at home. And let me show you the hood as well. It's magnetic, so wasn't that much that I have to do. It just clicks. Yeah, I saw and some people commenting earlier on that yes, this is the first time I think I'm on stream wearing a hoodie, but I'm not the only one with a hoodie. I think it looks better on that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think it looks better on that. To be Actually, honest. took me a second. I was like, I don't have yeah. a hoodie, but oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. <laughs> right. Normally, I wear a shirt and good one. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's uh, what a hoodie is really for. It's uh, going to make this because um, when you, when you see like professional uh, monitors uh, that are meant for uh, content creation, for productivity, when you're working on you know important projects where color accuracy and you know really. Um, everything regarding light spillage and color distortion that's important they will have to have a hood just like this because this actually blocks a lot of the spillage from your environment a lot of the light that's not welcome for your uh, monitor and well if you don't like to use it that's fine too just take it off yeah that's fine okay 32 inch ultra HD and let's show you guys in a little bit of details the front so we already uh, had someone asking about the bezels right so as you can see here really really thin bezel it's uh, about a few millimeters about two millimeters or something and on the top as well well, okay, it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult to show the top, but yeah. let me uh, try to... Ah, it's basically the same as on the yeah, sides. It's, it's yeah, practically, yeah it's, it is exactly the same as the side. So, um, yeah, that's the front. And if we take a look at the chin here, uh, this is, of course, a... S wait here, where is it? Here. This, of course, is a sticker. You can remove it anytime you want, so it doesn't ne necessarily have to be here. So, don't worry. And if we take a look at the middle, you see oh, here. There's like a little cutout, a uh, little cutout, a little hole, which is uh, actually the uh, it's a sensor. So this one will smartly uh, scan the environment, and then it will know if it's like really lit up or if it's like in a dark area. And this will make sure that. The monitor itself can intelligently adjust the monitor brightness accordingly. So if you're in a dark area, you will spare your eyes by lowering the brightness without you having to touch anything. And if it's like really lit up, really light in the environment, then it will of course heighten or it will uh, turn up in the brightness automatically. And there's two more little holes in here. One is here and one is here. Well, these two are actually uh, camera. Oh, well, sorry, uh, microphones. So. If you're using the uh, monitor's microphone when you're like having conferences or uh, chatting with your friends or whatever, these two are already uh, noise cancel enabled. So later I'll show you in the software how you can do this. But if you use this monitor or this uh, microphone, microphones right here, you make sure that your incoming or outgoing signal is going to be noise cancelled when you have some annoying noises that's playing around in the background. Um, Okay, so We've got some people uh, asking course. about orientation and what you can do indeed with the uh, with the stand and, and the swiveling and that that stuff. So maybe you can uh, do some yoga with the monitor. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, no, my back's not strong <laughs> no, really. for this kind of stuff. Um, okay, so here and then we have the tilt, of course. 
people were asking if you can rotate it, but like rotate it, to, to vertical, to uh, yeah, to vertical uh, stance, for example. No, no, this one is not. Um, no, it's well, it's not. So no. don't try it. But you could do in that. Any but other you direction, need to mount it. It's swiveling, tilting. Yeah. You know, there you have plenty of option left. Um, exactly. If you mount, if you use the VESA mount option to, to put it on like a, a monitor arm or you know wall mount, you, you could do that potentially. But yeah, on the uh, uh, on the stand that, that comes with the monitor, you you can't uh, rotate it into vertical uh, orientation. Okay, then let me show you the backside. The backside for me is kind of where you know the all the design efforts kind of went to. We have this gold uh, rosé gold ish um, uh, as well logo right here and this has the same well actually this just resembles the rest of the tint the uh, like the cable management here a uh, little clip and also here we have the uh, the metal topping so let me show you the adjustable stand from this position as well Plenty of room left. Um, if we take a look at the side here, we have additional uh, ports for you to use, of course, here for SD cards. If you're into photography or videography, uh, you don't have to use a separate card reader anymore. It's a must have. Uh, two more USB 3.2s, and also, of course, microphone and headphone jack. And that's only the side. And oh. Let me rotate this first. Whoop. And here, of course, are the usual suspects. So this monitor is uh, with a power uh, supply, let's say, built in already. So that's why you see this uh, connection right here. So you just need a power cable. That's it. There's no AC adapter. And rest of here this is very important you need to use the usb upstream if you want to make use of the dedicated software that comes with uh, the monitor because we actually have the mcu in there a chip that's dedicated for uh, regulating the monitor's hardware uh, characteristics and options and features so yeah more or less uh, other otherwise there's uh, not much to uh, really say here two hdmis one uh, display port and also a usb type c and again microphone headphone uh, microphone and headphone jack and it can not lock even i spotted it in the corner of course yes and on the other side <coughs> we have whoop, our five-way joystick which you can use in five ways up down left right and center and this will in turn activate the OSD. I will also show you how that looks like, of course. So yeah, for aesthetics, uh, this is it. If you want to sh uh, see anything else, let me know. Otherwise, People I'm are asking to... about the specs, but I think maybe you'll show that later on as well. Yeah, that will come up in just a second mm -hmm. after I show you um, the difference between, because this is a Ultra HD monitor. And that means a lot 4K of the people, for people who don't know what ultra hd means yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so a lot of you guys we know are already or are still working on 1080p nothing wrong with that but there's really a big big difference when it comes to pixel density um well the the sharpness of the monitor when you're talking about ultra hd and for example full hd um so i have a full hd monitor uh, right under the table right now i'm going to bring this up and uh, in the meantime i'll power the monitor on as well first of all to show you guys uh, to show you guys what it looks like to have a pixel density with 4k monitor on like a 32 inch size and a regular 25 inch monitor which operates on 1080p because it's quite significant and uh, you know you really got to be careful because it's so sharp it sometimes can actually you know cut your eyes so <laughs> you really got to be careful and i'm going to power up the qb as well to do the demonstrations because let me just QB set it up can run 4k as you mentioned yes so a perfect combo there you go 
All right, then in the meantime, I'm going to see if we can uh, draw another winner for our Steam code giveaway. So you can go to msi.com slash two slash insider, as you can see over a jar there where he's hiding, uh, or click the Gleam link that's being uh, posted in chat bar by our stream elements bot every five minutes or so. Uh, if you don't see the link, please go to make sure you're, you're watching on our YouTube or Twitch channels, because those are the channels where the link will show up most reliably. The other channels that we are streaming to being Facebook and uh, Twitter they sometimes they're not a big fan of posting links so they they block it sometimes um, so anyway make sure you're you are watching our stream on those uh, platforms on YouTube or Twitch and then you can perform a couple of actions the more actions you perform the bigger your chance of winning it just adds points to your tally uh, if you are a regular viewer you can even claim a loyalty bonus. You can do this every single stream and it just basically adds up your points. So every single stream you can add more points to your total um, and that increases your chances of winning. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can uh, get some winners. And we, yeah, we have multiple codes to give away this live stream as well. So uh, even after this one, if you didn't win, don't worry, you'll still have plenty of chance to win later on during the stream. Um, okay. Let me see. Power cable, the last piece. Yes. And then hopefully by the time we've made somebody really, really happy, Ja is done setting up the monitor and we can continue with, uh, with that. Uh, the very next winner is called DFX Factory. DFX Factory. Congratulations, you win a $20 Steam wallet code. We'll mail that out to you. If you are one of the winners, we will mail out the, uh, the, the code to you. We've got your details. You've entered them when you uh, participated. So yeah, we will contact you in the coming days to send you the, your code. And yeah, hope you enjoy it. So plug in the power and almost done. Juan Carlos is asking about the USB version. Uh, I think Ja will get to that in a minute, Juan. So please bear with us and then Ja will tell you all about it. mouse and keyboard and I'm done. I mean John's done this before you can see you can see right he's a professional. Trust me. <laughs> okay the last piece of the puzzle. Uh, well let's see if I uh, killed it or not. <laughs> Yeah, but just a reminder, guys, this is the very same device that Ja took apart earlier this live stream. <laughs> ah. There's a light coming on. Let there be light. So, I have my microphone like right on top of the QB, and you, know, you can tell me if you hear any noise because uh, already I already mentioned just how silent this thing is because of its tiny, tiny, low rotating. Um, low speed rotating uh, fan. Yeah, that's about it. Can you hear it? Okay, uh, for this, I actually have to make room for a secondary monitor. Oh, there goes the power cable. Okay. So here I have our 25 inch eSports gaming monitor, which is our MAG 251RX, which has 240 hertz refresh rate and is fully G-Sync compatible. Now, this thing is on 25 inches and full HD. And this one right here is on 32 inches and ultra HD or 4K for some plebs. <laughs> and let me show you just how big the pixel density, well, the the clarity and the sharpness is of these kind of two, uh, these two kind of monitors, and what the differences are. So, the best way to show this is just for you to focus on, for example, the words right here, and the sharpness, and whether you see pixelated edges. So this is the 4K. Oh, don't now, spoil that. You should have asked them. <laughs> I was just stating the obvious, Because you should right? be able to tell, right? Let's be clear. Now here, we have the Full HD. 
Now just look at the edges. You can practically count the pixels. I mean, I think the I think the difference is pretty clear, right? So if you have never experienced 4K, uh, yeah, I'm trying to give you an idea of what it would look like. But the best thing would really be just to, you know, hop on your bike or your car, just go to a nearby retail store and really, you know, be mesmerized with how sharp it actually can be. <laughs> and yeah, so that's that. And now I'm going to... So it's basically just a very short reason of saying that's why you should choose Full HD for, for basically, well, reasons. Because it just looks that much sharper. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you need a razor blade, just go for 4K. And the thing is, you can always go down in, in resolution if you want to, uh, for, for whatever reason, if you, if you feel like it. But, you know, if you're limited to uh, Full HD, but you want to see something in 4K, that's really not possible. Let me get these two back into here. Okay. Oh, there's my chair. Okay, so a lot of you guys, of course, were all asking about the spikes, uh, the specs, and etc. So let's get into the specs of the monitor. Okay, I'm going to go full screen. Yep. Check. Panel, of course, I already mentioned, this is also a very, very good uh, content creation monitor productivity. So, of course, the panel is IPS because there you have, you have simply the best color reproduction and values. And of course, the size already mentioned 32 inches and the resolution. And since this is not a gaming monitor, we also, of course, try to keep the cost on as well by having a 60 hertz uh, refresh rate monitor. Because generally, for what this is meant for, you don't need higher uh, refresh rate. Um, yeah, the rest of the stuff uh, you can also see for yourself. But I just want to point out quite a few, well, just a few uh, details regarding, for example, the dynamic range. Here we have HDR 600, um, so it's um, kind of like near the high end already. Since you know the HDR range, they start with HDR 10 or HDR ready. Uh, some call it 10, some call it ready, and then you have like for example HDR 400, which is like really a good entry point to real HDR, and then you have 600, which is like a higher uh, a higher level HDR experience, and then you go to like for example HDR 1000 where you really have like the best experience. Now here with the HDR 600, you have an excellent uh, high dynamic range um, capability and also an experience. So if you're into HDR content, of course, first you've got to enable this in Windows, but it's just very simple. You just go to your screen settings and you enable HDR right now in Windows 10. Uh, of course, you can really enjoy HDR content like they're meant to be because sometimes you can use HDR content but you can't really display it because your monitor is not HDR certified. So with, with 60R, uh, 600, you really, really have the benefit of truly enjoying HDR content like they're meant to be, whether it's movies, uh, some projects you're working on, or even gaming. Because gaming nowadays, uh, of course, you can still play games on here, but you just have to play at 60 FPS. Well, I mean, Hertz refresh rate. You can go over that, but you can still have a good, uh, if you play a AAA title game, for example, you have a very, very good experience with it as well, just for some leisure. Yeah, um, Fast-paced games, yeah. like shooters, not really, but yeah, if you're into strategy games, this, this is really excellent, and this yeah. will make it so very resolution. vibrant. Um, and yeah, like Josh said, it's the, the HDR 600 range. Uh, it's really, you know, whether you're creating HDR content, because it's getting more and more readily available, um, or you, you want to watch HDR content. Uh, also, of course, with Windows 11, you've got the auto HDR uh, functionality coming up. So basically, th this can HDRify, if you will, uh, SDR 
uh, content. So standard dynamic range. Uh, and it's already looking pretty impressive. And with this monitor, I mean, you can, yeah, you can really enjoy that as well. Um, so yeah, excellent. I saw some people asking about the color accuracy as well, John. Uh, <laughs> they're right yeah. there. Yeah, all the important uh, values that we have right here, I've packed, the, uh, I've packed the all two in one single segment here with these IP3, sRGB, and also the color accuracy when it comes to delta. So we have 95% coverage of these IP3, which is uh, already excellent, because near 98% you already have like quite highest of the highest possible profiles. And then you have the sRGB, which is a significant 1 to 36% coverage compared to regular plebs, uh, which are about 99%, 98%, sometimes 95% SP, uh, sRGB coverage. So tons of uh, upgrade in this category as well. And of course, when you talk about really, uh, the, really the real professional monitors, um, then, you know, generally it's, it's a, uh, acceptable by the industry when the monitor has like a delta E of about three to six. It's considered acceptable, it's okay. So, and really um, when you try to go higher or lower, depending on how you look at it, um, from three, so you go to two, that, that's really where you create like most of the value. So if you truly need a professional monitor with the best, uh, the, 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 well, the best accuracy when it comes to color reprodu reproduction, Delta E2 is really uh, what you're looking for. So not all the monitors, even the professional ones, sometimes have this kind of value because it's quite, it's not easy to implement into your hardware. So uh, it kind of also drives up the price, but, we try to keep it down and also provide this for, well, Summit, because this is like kind of our first uh, generation Summit. So we really try to you know, pack a punch in there and really, yeah, provide some good value with uh, excellent um, color reproduction in return. So yeah, that's for our color uh, reproduction and accuracy. Um, anything else for now, maybe, or I think? No, I mean, uh, Mr. Mastodox is asking a question that uh, intrigues me somewhat. Uh, I thought you needed <laughs> 600 nit nits for HDR600. Um, I'm not sure. I just I tried looking it up as well because I'm, I'm not an expert in this. But I do see there's a brightness indeed, but it's in, uh, I think, I'm not sure how you, but c CD per square meter. So I, I think it's a little bit different than uh, nits. But it might be that, that it is the same thing. I, I don't know what I'm talking about here. Yeah, actually, um, generally, it's not like a necessity. And it's also peak brightness, right? Yeah. So. But usually, yes, they do uh, come hand in hand, they couple uh, <laughs> with each other, uh, but it's not a necessity in this case. Uh, Panka is a response time. So uh, response time for this is a four milliseconds. So a little bit different than what you're used to with gaming monitors, of course, which are uh, usually at, the, at its peak, uh, one millisecond. Um, but like I said, here in this case, you don't need to drive up your panel to that kind of ranges because it's not necessary for what this is meant for. It, it, yeah, it's not built for that, basically. It's for a different purpose. Um, okay, um, yeah, the rest of the bit, uh, I think you already read for yourself. Um, so all in all, this is really the kind of monitor that you get um, if you are looking into content creation, if you're looking into you know, really just displaying the best, uh, best possible colors when you are like enjoying your uh, movies or projects. Uh, you can use this for leisure uh, because you know it's still 4K, so whatever it is that you do on here, it's going to look excellent. So yeah, a lot of uses for uh, this kind of monitor. And now I'm going to show you what it comes with when it comes to uh, like what kind of features does it have and how do you use them? How do you use smart brightness? How do you new use noise cancel? Uh, you know, there's a specific app that we have uh, developed for these kind of monitors, which is our newest uh, kind of additions in the app segment, which is the uh, productivity intelligence. And let me just show you uh, Wait, just let me turn on my screen capture first because it got turned off. Yeah. So I have to restart it. Okay, almost done. Now I'm just gonna select my mouse. Okay, should be fine now. Let's see. Yes. So here we have the productivity app. 
And if you want to use this app, you don't necessarily have to click on the app itself. You can just use the macro key that, uh, that's underneath the monitor on the left hand side. If you press that, it will automatically uh, open up the, the app. But you also have the option to uh, use the macro key for something else if you feel like you know you, you use some uh, other features more often than opening the app itself that's fine now first um, here is the auto brightness control so what it does is that uh, 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 on default it's off now if you want to adjust your brightness uh, automatically depending on you know how lit up how well lit up your environment is because Especially if it's like dark, it's going to, uh, you know, it's, your eyes are going to get fatigued and, you know, the blue light, they're also um, really bad for your eyes when it's like very dark and especially late in the night. So if you put this to auto, and let me show you with my camera because you can't see this on the capture. This is like some, uh, this is hardware based. But this is, uh, okay, let me turn it off to off so you have the max brightness that it's uh, supposed to have. So this is like on off it will have the max brightness. If you turn this to auto, and like I mentioned earlier, here is the camera. So right now it's registering light. And then based on its calculations, it will show you this kind of brightness because um, this is like, in this kind of environment, is this the best level of brightness? Now, if I, for example, cover my hand, uh, well, cover the camera, the sensor with my hand, the monitor is going to slowly turn darker because basically I'm making the environment uh, pitch black because the sensor doesn't see any light anymore. If I remove my hand, it will adjust the brightness up. I'm not sure if you can see this fairly well on the camera because I hope my camera is not adjusting the brightness accordingly <laughs> as well. But uh, it was hard to see from my side, but I'm not sure. I mean, I'm just looking at the preview here, so maybe for for you guys at home, it's it's clearer. So let me know if you guys can actually see this. Otherwise, um, I might have to use something else. Uh, maybe switch the camera up because my mobile phone could be adjusting the brightness <laughs> automatically as well as the monitor changes. So let's see if the other camera does this better. The detailed. Okay. Let me put this, set this to off for now. And then, auto. Yeah, I think that that's showing something. So then let me turn it back to off. Okay, I think now you do see a difference, right? I think it's more clever. We can even try it with the main cam uh, because it's also. Yeah, sure. You do it one more time. Okay. I'm turning this off so it gets the brightness back up to what it is. <laughs> you see a significant <laughs> boost, right? It's pretty much a whiteout. Yeah. So if I then put it to auto because my hand is covering the uh, sensor it will change uh, right away when I put it to auto. Now the change is gradually, uh, it goes gradually, so it's not like instantly. Mm, but you will yes. see... You'll you know, see that it, it becomes gets visible more, basically, yes. the, the UI. So it went from pretty much a white, completely white out screen. And again, guys, this is like, because there's so much light here and the camera is, you know, tuned to, to catch us in, in the current light. Yeah. So. So we will like turn this, it back to off, you will notice in the, uh, right away the big difference. Yeah. Poof. You see? So that's what the, the smart brightness does with uh, the sensor in front. And if you like to use, uh, for example, the sound tune setting, so what the sound tune setting does is it's right next here. It's going to uh, give you the noise cancellation that I was talking about earlier. 
So if you turn on sound tune, this means that whenever you're using the microphone from the monitor, which are quite good, um, you will be uh, canceling any noise that's playing on your background. So uh, working from home or uh, you know, chatting with your friends, it's going to be more convenient when you do have some background noise, which is quite annoying. Uh, <clears throat> so we also have a very nice um, little feature that's, uh, well, it's the KVM. So what the KVM basically does is that it's going to uh, regulate the interaction between, uh, for example, if you have like two desktops or two sources of uh, signals coming in, it will automatically like regulate or switch between those accordingly uh, if you put it to auto. And of course, a lot of the other settings um, which you would like to change or, or you know, anything that's uh, kind of changeable for your monitor, you can all find them here on the main page. Uh, on the left is very uh, detailed when it comes to profiles. So here we already have the best possible profiles for each, uh, for each instance. If you are like um, looking into uh, working with uh, sRGB because your, your video projects, you know, they're all based on RS, uh, sRGB because that's what your client requires. Uh, you know, you can choose the sRGB uh, profile and then your monitor will display the colors exactly like if your client is using the sRGB profile as well. Uh, you have exact the same values. So the monitor will adjust uh, accordingly. Now, if you need, uh, the display P, uh, so DCI-P3 profile, just click on here. If you're tired of you know, the, 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 f the free fierce blue light, you can also use anti-blue. So this way, uh, this way uh, your screen will become kind of yellow. It will filter out all the blue light and really uh, spare your eyes and your circadian rhythm, especially when it's late, so you can have a good night's sleep and a good rest. Not recommended for color accuracy, by the way. <laughs> Don't forget they're, to they're, turn that one off. All gone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, quite a few things more. And uh, another thing to mention when, it, when you talk about profiles is that this monitor is already uh, excellently uh, factory pre-calibrated. Uh, pre, uh, um, but if you choose to calibrate, your, calibrate this yourself, we have uh, a feature for this, which is our true color feature. Uh, so you can also uh, recalibrate if you think that your panel is somehow not, yeah, it's not well adjusted. It should be. But uh, just in case, if you want to do it anyways, uh, you have the capability here, but you do need to have a calibrator. So, um, but we have the software for you ready, but you do have uh, to have the hardware to do the calibration. But you shouldn't have to uh, do it anyways. And if we go down to uh, this productivity intelligence app, there's also, for example, screen assistance. So if you are working on some stuff, or if you want to simply know, you know, how big is the A4, you can choose one of these. Uh, well, uh, assistance. Let's say, let's see. Uh, let's take the ruler for example. If I click on apply, then we have to switch the camera because uh, this is the hardware <laughs> overlay, so we can't see this in the digital capture. Um, so you can see here, uh, we have a blue ruler uh, all the way on the top row and also on the left row vertically. Now, if we change this to something else, um, for this one, for example, it will split up your screen in four uh, segments. So it, it kind of really depends on what you're working on and what you need uh, if you want to know, you know, what kind of uh, paper sizes are uh, in real time compared on this kind of uh, surface, which is a 32 inch uh, panel. You'll see this is like already indicated an A4. Okay, the logo is kind of covering it, but it says A4 here for the biggest uh, circle and then you go down there, you have B5, A5, postcard, name card. Um, so yeah, these kind of features we have uh, quite some um, Options, which oh, I hope it's something else instead. But as you can see, it doesn't show up on the on the capture, for example. So yeah, that's purely that on the you know, monitor based. You can you can actually see it now in the miniature view. Uh, on Josh, if you move it down, you can see that the uh, the rectangles, you know, the the A shapes are still there, but in the capture, it's not there. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. Um, so. Uh, what else is here? We have, uh, if you 
want to adapt, for example, some hotkeys, we have uh, we have that possible uh, we have the possibility here as well. Uh, first of all, there's of course our split windows function, which we have had uh, for quite some times now. Um, so you can just pre-arrange everything, uh, all the windows you have open. You can select the uh, the arrangements and then select the uh, the apps, and then you will pre-arrange all the things into uh, whatever it is that you have pre-selected. So if you're multitasking, uh, that's good. Especially on such a big surface, uh, 32 inch and 4K, you have quite the room to multitask. So it's it's yeah, it's going to be more efficient if you have all of the stuff here in the right direction, well, in the right position, so you can work more efficiently. Now, when it comes to, oh, let me turn off the screen assistant. It's right now, it's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for the view. capture, it's not really doing anything, but no. I can imagine for you, it's, uh, <laughs> it's annoying. Uh, yeah, we have some more tools uh, if you're interested, you know, uh, if, whether it's a, a magnifier or, you know, your power settings, you know, even tuning your, my, your keyboard and mouse. And otherwise, my one of my favorite settings is going to be the macro key tab. So uh, on the left uh, lower hand, we already told you there is a macro key that's already dedicated to opening the app. Now, it doesn't ne necessarily have to be because here you can choose whatever it is that it, it will open. So uh, switch between profiles or, uh, for example, screen assistance uh, on and off, uh, you know, doing some split windows. Or um, so it will uh, arrange everything uh, like I just showed you with um, that split, split window f feature. So if you click on the macro key, everything will be arranged, uh, which is like in the pre uh, position that's predetermined. So you can change this to uh, yeah, other features, whatever you will use the most, whatever it is that makes your time uh, easier <laughs> behind the screen. And then uh, if we go to settings, we have uh, the hotkey settings, for example, in which you can also, uh, if you enable this, you can uh, hotkey, for example, brightness. Uh, if you want to increase the brightness, you can set this up to, for example, control up. Uh, if you want to change uh, your profile, if, uh, profile three is for your video projects, you just use uh, control shift three. Uh, pro profile five is for your uh, movie uh, you know, purposes um, or for Photoshop or something else. Set it to you know, control shift five. And there's yeah, a lot more other uh, features here that you can hotkey. So um, yeah, it just, we just try to make your time like more efficient uh, behind the screen. That's going to uh, also make your productivity, yeah, productivity yeah. higher. <laughs> I've got a question in the chat. Hi, Demon is asking if uh, this functionality. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about, for example, uh, one of the things that you, you can uh, like put the screen into several uh, pieces, or you know, all the hotkey functionality. Uh, if this can be installed on any window device or specific to QB, and actually, I don't think it's specific to QB. It's actually specific to mm -hmm. our yes. Monitors. Of this, this one type. is uh, specifically for the monitor because you can even use the app if you don't uh, plug in the USB Type B. So you need to plug in a dedicated USB cable in order to control because this is all um, kind of like bundled with the chip. We have like the MCU on the back of the uh, monitor, which is a chip that controls all of these hardware uh, characteristics and gives you the possibility to use these kind of controls. So uh, yes, first of all, it's dedicated to the monitor. Yes. But yes, you do have to install it on the desktop that you're using the monitor with. Yes. But the app is tailored for the monitor, not exactly. for the desktop. And you can download this on our website, uh, right underneath the uh, product page for the specific product that you're using or plan to use. Um, okay, so then the last one, which is the joystick that I showed you earlier, which you can use in five ways. You can here also choose uh, which direction will activate uh, which action. So you can here set up all your favorite uh, most used actions and then, uh, yeah, you don't really need to click on anything anymore. You just have to push left, up, right or down. And there you have all your favorite settings. Completely customizable. Yes. So this is the uh, more or less the productivity intelligence app. You know, uh, for some of you that are familiar with our uh, past Dragon Center or a gaming OSD, more uh, more the gaming OSD uh, version, this is like a a, a tailored a uh, adaptation of the gaming OSD that we have been running with our gaming monitors for quite a few years now, and yeah, it gets more refined every year. And this is the version that we have specifically for our uh, let's say monitors for at home use and also for professional. Uh, video editing or just content creation in general. Um, 
So once you have figured out you know, what kind of profiles fit you best, uh, in what kind of situations, uh, doing which projects, you can also make sure to save it because you can create your own dedicated profiles in which all of the other characteristics all, and features are already uh, predetermined or like set in stone like you have um, done so and then create several profiles for several um, different well, kind of scenarios. So yeah, a lot of functionality with the Productivity uh, Intelligence app. Uh, you can really just uh, make the monitor as convenient as possible whenever you're behind the monitor. Uh, just make sure you don't do too much on it because it might explode. Uh, you, <laughs> you, never, you never know when you use like the wrong settings and then pfft. No, I'm just kidding. It's really a very user-friendly uh, software and yeah. yeah. Once you get your hands on it, you will see what I mean because you can really tailor the yeah, the monitor to uh, the best way possible that's uh, to your liking. Deepa brother was also saying that default wallpaper of QBN is is cool. Um, can can people get these wallpapers from the website? Because you can get certain wallpapers from our website, right? Yeah, not for this. Not all of the. Well, cause this is actually our, our let's say, our custom uh, backgrounds that's like pre-installed with all of the uh, gaming desktops uh, into the uh, the the Windows Room. But it's not uploaded on the website. Ooh. So but you can find, but yeah, if you, if you want some cool backgrounds uh, or some cool web, web wallpapers, uh, you can actually find them on msi.com. And then, uh, yeah, there's there's a wallpaper option there. So you can always browse through some of the cool wallpapers we have there if you, if you want to have one of those. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, and uh, actually I forgot to mention this, but I just remembered uh, in the app uh, that I just showed you, the intelligence uh, app, you can actually also upgrade your firmware. So um, actually before, it wasn't possible to upgrade all our, our gaming monitors because the process was very difficult. And uh, if you did something wrong, uh, you know you also needed hardware equipment for that. It can go really wrong. And we have actually uh, simplified this process uh, like to such a degree that right now you can just use the software uh, provided to upgrade your firmware. So that's very important, of course, whenever there are like big changes within your firmware, uh, well, within your monitor, and you need to, uh, in order to have these kind of changes, these kind of upgrades, improvements, you need to upgrade the firmware so that the firmware can then, in turn, really, um, let's say, bring out the best steer or use the monitor yep. uh, as it's intended in the upgraded way. Um, so yeah, right now you also have these kind of capabilities with our new, uh, first of its kind, actually, for now, the introduction of the Summit monitor. And I expect that this is going to be implemented more and more in our gaming monitors and our uh, content creation monitors, and also uh, you know monitors for in uh, for use at home. Um, so yeah, good stuff right there. And since uh, the QB is still connected, I also wanted to show you um, you know how is the QB when it, whenever it comes to uh, yeah you know at home use. So if you're using office programs, you know how it's going to feel like. Is it uh, like slow? Uh, you know what kind of performance can you expect from this kind of? Uh, wait, wait, John. Uh, before before you do that, do you know what time it is? Is it another giveaway time, perhaps? Oh yes. Let's go. You know it. You know it. You know it. Okay, guys. So uh, you can uh, still win a Steam wallet code, twenty dollars. You can go to msi.com/slash/two/slash/insider or click the Gleam link that's being shared on YouTube or Twitch. Uh, mostly and yeah the more actions you perform on our Gleam platform the more chances you have to win if you're a regular viewer you can also claim your uh, loyalty bonus points that of course increases your chances of winning a code so um, yeah let's see if we can make some people happy and yes let's draw another winner okay yes we have another winner and their name is Jaffa Cake Jaffa cake. Jaffa cake. Congratulations <laughs> on winning one of the codes. And uh, yeah, we'll give away a bit of some more codes later on during the stream as well. But congratulations, and we'll uh, get the codes out to you guys as soon as possible, the, the persons, the winners. See, one, pe one person asking about uh, if, they c if they can see the BIOS settings of the QBN. Um, Mm. Not not with the capture software we're using right now, because uh, we're, we're using um, NDI. Uh, so for that, we would have to uh, yeah, do a different uh, capture uh, 
method. Maybe next time. Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm, I have now opened two Excel, uh, Excel uh, templates, which are quite busy, and I'm just trying to show you guys if you are trying to multitask or you know you're using your uh, QB for uh, office, for work, or at home. You know how it's going to feel like. So I'm going to open quite a few programs and also browse around and use Chrome, <coughs> the RAM killer, and mm -hmm. you know uh, just give you a general feeling of how does it browse, how does it react. As you can see, um, I have already two uh, quite a busy Excel uh, files opened up, and I am now. And this is the, the four gig model, right? Just to, yes. to remind everybody, so it, it can still be upgraded to sixteen gigs if you so wish. Uh, this is the bare minimum of the models that are available uh, in terms of RAM. <coughs> Yeah, so if you are really like a Chrome freak, I uh, do suggest you uh, maybe to upgrade to 8 gigabytes, <laughs> maybe even 16. But yeah, so I have now uh, Excel open with this kind of uh, template and uh, two more uh, big Excel uh, files. And remember, this is um, this is a 4K, right? This is running at yes. 4K, so it's it's not full HD. It's 4, 4K, so. Also, the, the integrated graphics is really having to uh, work a bit. I'm just randomly trying to edit some stuff. I don't mind what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, everything is pretty much just uh, instant reaction and there isn't uh, any delay anywhere whenever I switch between uh, the two um, Excel sheets or even you know, go back to uh, PowerPoint. And I'm trying to adapt some stuff here. So really don't underestimate the hardware that's inside here. So for what it's meant for, it really gets the job done like without any yeah, compromise. So the Codfather was asking, uh, does Windows, uh, Windows needs four, I think you're, you mean four gigs of RAM uh, to run, does it not? Um, not? Not really, I mean, you can, you can run it on less, but I think four gigs is like the, the minimum that is recommended indeed uh, to, to ensure a somewhat um, smooth experience. Uh, more RAM obviously will, will help a bit, especially when you're opening or doing multiple things at the same time, uh, running multiple instances uh, alongside each other. Yeah, don't have to worry about that because we have definitely, uh, you know, uh, made sure that it's going to be uh, working yeah. perfectly fine. Uh, also, we, of course, we also work with Microsoft. Uh, just be sure that we won't get you a product that's going to be uh, compromised in such an obvious way, like uh, the, the RAM is not going to support Windows. Don't worry about that. Can you pull up the task manager, maybe, that, that people can see, what, you know, how much is being used at the moment? Okay, um, but I guess you can't see this right now. Well, well, I, had to, I had to scale down the uh, exactly the windows because it, it, it's otherwise 4K, right? So yeah. it's, it's a bit tiny, but maybe you can call it out as so well. So memory maybe. right now, I'm uh, running at 3.2 gigabytes, uh, and I have two Excel uh, files open. I have a PowerPoint file open. I also have Chrome open and some other programs running on the background, also doing the screen capture uh, digitally with NDI. Um, so yeah, I'm still very comfortable if I just randomly type on stuff here, like news. Yeah. As you can see, you know, there, there, there is no delay in the, the reaction time when it comes to performance as to you know, everyday stuff, even though you have quite some stuff open. Um, and I mean, if you, you choose the, the build based on what you want to do with it, right? So if you are planning to open a whole lot of things at the same time and you need to multitask like crazy, then obviously you're probably going to uh, go for a model with a bit more RAM inside, either that or you, you're going to upgrade it yourself, uh, which again is possible as Jazz showed earlier. So you, it's really flexible in terms of the platform and, and what you want to do with it. Yeah. So it's, yeah, like I said, it's perfect if you're doing some uh, office work on here or if you're working from home, yep. you want to use this for, uh, you know, uh, receptions or any biz other business related or just all around general leisure entertainment at home. It's, it's all fine. Uh, you can watch 4K movies on here. Um, yeah, I'm 
basically that's also what it's meant for. So if, if you know if you know someone that's interested in this kind of stuff, you know, he can yep. uh, check out the QB over here. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, you can also, of course, always go to our webpage to check it out. Uh, we're just here to bring you the information uh, to answer questions that you might have regarding this kind of stuff. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think uh, if you guys have any other questions regarding uh, the monitor or the QB, uh, fire away. Otherwise, I think we're going to uh, approach today's ending. Well, not before we draw another winner. Of course. Obviously. <laughs> so, guys, uh, and actually, I'm going to see if we can do two. Because, uh, well, just because we can, right? Uh, so, guys, you can still participate if you're really quick. Go to amazon.com slash two slash insider, just over Ja there, uh, you can see it. Or uh, click on the Gleam link that's being put in the chat of Twitch and YouTube by our Stream Elements bot. Uh, there you have to perform a couple of actions. The more actions you perform, the more points you get. Uh, that gives you better chances of winning. If you are a regular viewer, you can claim loyalty bonus points, uh, which also add to your chance of winning. And yeah, basically that's, that's it. Uh, so uh, yeah, see if we can draw some more winners. The last lucky winners of today. Yes, two of them. $20 Steam codes. And let's see. We have... Yep, I think we have two winners. Here we go. Um, actually, you know what? No, let's just do three. Someone because, uh, you know, is feeling it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Someone why not? is feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Put your hands up on Peter. <laughs> It's a bit though, early to play Santa Claus, huh? Well, something like that. It's still uh, three months away. Yeah. Well, you know, never too early to uh, to, to to give some stuff away. Um, anyway, we've got uh, we've got our three winners. So the first one is called uh, Lucas Twenty Five. Congratulations, Lucas Twenty Five! You also win a twenty dollar Steam wallet Alrighty. code. Already. Um, our uh, uh, second winner is called uh, Sarge. Congratulations, Sarge! You also win a twenty dollar Steam wallet code. And uh, our last winner for today is called uh, Francis C546. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm not going to repeat that name, but I'm just going to say Francis. <laughs> Congratulations, Francis, as well, uh, for that yeah. winning a $20 Steam Wallet code. We're going to get those codes out to the winners as soon as possible. Uh, I hope you have fun with them. And of course, as always, thank you guys for watching. Yeah, so next week we are going Wait, let me to get be... Let me get the chat back on the stream because we don't want to. If, if there are any good questions, uh, you know, we don't want to miss them. So, yeah, let's just see. Okay. In the meanwhile, uh, next week we're yes. going to be very quiet. Quiet. Yeah, it's all about uh, indeed uh, the the quietude, which is uh, obviously a made up word, but uh, <laughs> I think it gets the message across. You get the right? gist, right? But yeah, you get the point. It's all about. Shh, being quiet uh, as quiet as possible uh, so Michiel will be here to talk all about that uh, new case and uh, how it helps you to uh, be as quiet as possible if you're into like the, the quietest possible build uh, he's going to talk and tell you all about how to do that and especially with that case <laughs> uh, what okay. USB webcam do you use uh, we have actually got multiple so we've got one that's, well, actually two of the ones, one that's actually right in front of my face here, that's actually the yeah. same one that Ja has right there. And this one, yeah. Which is a, uh, a Logitech Brio 4K cam. Uh, and then uh, the one that uh, we're using right now that Ja is looking at, uh, basically, that's a, a D, uh, is it? SL, D, DSLR. Wait, you mean uh, the main camera? Yeah, yeah so our that's main our, camera uh, is, is our just... Our Lumix yeah. uh, TH5. Yes. Which is excellent for uh, capture and yeah. uh, videography stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, <coughs> yeah. uh, will we see more Office products soon? Uh, always do some. Uh, we actually we don't feature them quite as often because we do focus mostly on the the, the high end, the gaming stuff. Because I think you know yeah. that's what gets most people's blood pumping, uh, what most people are hyped about. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys are are also really interested in in the more Office and professional uh, yeah, and also products that we have. have, let us know. I mean, obviously we we can do that, um, yeah. but we try to you know estimate what what everybody uh, what most people will, will be most interested uh, in uh, so if we've got it wrong and you want to see more office things please let us know because we can do that of course yes we can uh, we've got plenty of those actually you'd be surprised you can check out our website and there you can find all of them anyway um, 
How yeah, big yeah. actually is the MSI? Uh, ja, I think you can answer Wait, that how, one. How, how big, big is the MSI doll? Because it looks big, because it's like right in front of me, but it's I kind guess of distorted. If you're talking about how buffed he is, it's <sighs> uh, quite a bodybuilder. Uh, yes. But if it's like his dimensions, I will say he's about 35 centimeters tall and he's quite chubby, so it's like with the legs spread out 30 centimeters wide, 25-ish. <laughs> and the tail itself is like already 40 centimeters. So oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a big boy. You don't, you don't want to mess with this guy. Ah, look at Definitely. him. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And I uh, hope to see you next week. Yeah. At the same time, same day. And uh, stay safe, guys. And have a good day, wherever Take you care. are. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao, guys.